Hello everyone, my name is Pavel Loučka and I will give a presentation on the article by me and by Mr. Petr Vašík with the title Algorithms for Multi-Conditioned Conic Fitting in Geometric Algebra for Conics. In the beginning, we will briefly discuss the concept of geometric algebra for conics, including the basic geometric primitives. Next, we will focus on four conic fitting algorithms that are described in our article, each of them using GAC. And finally, we will take a look at the experimental results acquired by applying each of these algorithms on a sample data set. In order to describe the geometric algebra for conics, we generalize the concept of two-dimensional conformal geometric algebra with signature 3-1 and with usual basis n bar e1, e2 and n. Vectors e1 and e2 form the usual Euclidean basis, while n bar stands for the origin and n stands for the infinity. Consequently, each point of a Euclidean plane can be embedded into G31 by this formula. So the objects representable by vectors in G31 are linear combinations of these four terms 1x, y, and x squared plus y squared. So these objects are only circles, lines, point pairs, and points. Uh, we may see that four terms are not enough to describe the conic, so we must add two more terms in particular half of x squared minus y squared and the mixed term xy. Moreover, it turns out that we need also two new infinities and two new origins. So the resulting dimension of the space generating the appropriate geometric algebra is 8. So currently we are working with Clifford algebra of signature 5-3 and we want to somehow with this algebra model the conic sections in the plane. So we have to describe an embedding of the plane into this algebra. To do so, we choose a basis such that the corresponding bilinear form is this. We may see on this matrix that its middle submatrix corresponds to the vectors of Euclidean basis and that uh, the 3 by 3 blocks in the corners correspond to the vectors forming the width pairs. Consequently, we denote the corresponding basis in this way. Vectors e1 and e2 form the usual Euclidean basis. The n barred vectors stands for the origins and simple n vectors stands for the infinities. Finally, it can be proven that the embedding of the Euclidean plane we are looking for has this form. We can also see that uh, this is basically the embedding into the conformal geometric algebra, but with these two last terms added. All in all, we can define the geometric algebra for conics as the Clifford algebra with signature 5-3 together with the embedding we saw on the previous slide in the basis determined by matrix B. Moreover, the geometric primitives of GAC can also be represented by vectors. For example, a point embedded into GAC can be represented by vector P of this form. Also, the inner product null space cone Q can be represented by this vector. For the sake of the further computations, we also denote the first two elements of the conic vector as a vector w and the next four elements as a vector v. As I already mentioned, our article describes four conic fitting algorithms and the first of them we call the original algorithm. It has already been described by Hrdina, Navrat and Vashik in one of their articles. And the reason why we included it in our article is that another three algorithms in the article are based upon this. Therefore, we will describe this original algorithm a bit. So, generally the conic fitting problem is quite classical. We have some points represented by GAC vectors PI. 
and we are looking for a GAC vector of the conic Q that is somehow fitted among those points. The authors assumed uh, the objective function to be of this form, which stands for the sum of squared algebraic distances from the point pi to the fitted conic Q. Since we want to minimize this objective function, and we are not interested in the minimum that occurs when Q is equal to zero vector, the authors consider the geometric constraint that is natural for the GAC setting. Consequently, using the matrix of bilinear form, we can rewrite the objective function as a quadratic form with the matrix P that is acquired in this way. In order to reach the solution of our optimization problem, the authors assume this decomposition of the matrix P, where P0 is a 2 by 2 matrix, P1 is a 2 by 4 matrix, and in the middle we have a matrix PC that is 4 by 4. Here we have to stress that the subscript C denotes that this block corresponds to the CRA part in GAC. In a way similar to the matrix PC, we may denote the middle 4 by 4 part of matrix B as PC. So we have this, and this matrix coincides with the matrix of the inner product in CRA. Moreover, using this matrix BC, we may reformulate the normalization constraint simply as this. Using all these reformulations and decompositions of matrices, we may conclude the proposition 1 that states that the solution to our optimization problem for conic fitting in GAC is given by the conic Q of this form, where V is an eigenvector corresponding to the minimal the negative eigenvalue of the operator PCON, and we can see that this operator is obtained from the matrices involved in the previous decompositions by a simple matrix computation. After finding the optimal eigenvector V, we can simply calculate the vector W in this way. So this proposition basically states that our original optimization problem can be converted into an eigenproblem of a certain matrix operator. Then resulting conic has always some internal parameters. In particular, it is the center position, the magnitude of its semi-axis and the tilt of its principal axis. Well, uh, with the original algorithm, none of these parameters is known beforehand, but there are situations when we simply want to prescribe some additional geometric condition to the fitted conic. In the article, we focused on three special types of these additional geometric conditions. Namely, the first one is that the conic has its axis aligned with coordinate axis. The second one is that the co conic has its center point at the coordinate system origin. And the third one is when the conic satisfies both two previous conditions. Consequently, we describe three conic fitting algorithms, each of them resulting in either of the conics with following additional geometric conditions. The reason we focused specifically on these three additional conditions is that each of these conditions can be formulated very simply in GAC setting. More specifically, we can derive the conics with additional geometric conditions from the conic vector of this form simply by setting some of its elements to zero. For example, if we want the conic to be axis aligned, we know that v bar cross must be zero. And uh, similarly with other conics with additional geometric conditions. So if we denote these special conics respectively as QL, Q0 and QL0, we know that their respective vectors must look like this. Since we now know the vector forms, of the conics with additional geometric conditions, we may formulate an alternative optimization problem that is almost identical to the original one. The only difference 
to the original optimization problem here is that instead of looking for some general conic Q, we are looking for a conic Q star that uh, stands for one of the conics with additional geometric conditions. So Q star can be, for example, QL. So in both the objective function and in the normalization constraint, Q is substitute for Q star. In order to reach solution in a similar way as in the original problem, we have to decompose the matrix P, but we have to do it differently. Since some of the coefficients of the vector Q star are known to be zero, we are not interested in the rows and columns of the matrix P that correspond to such zero elements, and hence we will decompose it in a different way. For example, if we take QL, as the Q star in which the first element is zero. So in the decomposition of matrix P, we neglect the first row and the first column. So it gives rise to these four matrices. Analogously, we may consider the compositions of matrix P for vectors Q0 and QL0 respectively in this way. Unfortunately, in these two decompositions, the produced matrices have its elements isolated. So, for example, the symbol of a simple wave stands for the matrix P10 that is described here. Moreover, this neglecting of particular columns and rows may also affect the matrix BC, so we additionally define the matrix BC0 of this form. Consequently, after defining all these decompositions and the matrices produced, we may formulate the proposition 2 that is almost identical to proposition 1. This proposition states that the solution to the new optimization problem for conic fitting in GAC is given by a conic vector Q star containing vector V star and W star, where V star again is an eigenvector corresponding to the minimal non-negative eigenvalue of certain matrix operator. We can see that the formulae for computation P con star and W star are identical to the proposition 1, up to the point that here the matrices involved are denoted with asterisks. This means that the start matrices and vectors involved must be substituted according to this substitution table, which depends on the conic we want to fit. Overall, we described four different conic fitting algorithms, including the original one and their respective implementations in MATLAB. For the sake of the simple orientation, we named each of these algorithms after the conic it produces. Finally, we applied each algorithm on this dataset consisting of 10 points. We may see the resulting conics in the next slide. These four subfigures represent respectively general conic Q, axis aligned conic QL with its principal axis highlighted, the origin centered conic Q0, and finally the axis aligned origin centered conic QL0. As we may see in the figures, the sample dataset is not very appropriate for all the types of fitted conics especially if we are looking for a tight fit. We can see this in particular in the case of Q0, not to mention the case of QL0, where the fit is not tight at all. In this table, we can see the relationship between the type of the fitted conic, the tightness of the fit, represented by the value of objective function, at corresponding degrees of freedom of the particular fit. We can generally say that the more degrees of freedom the fitting method has, the tighter the fit produced is. It corresponds to the fact that the value of the objective function decreases as the number of degrees of freedom increases. Here we can see the references used for the article production. And that's all folks. Thank you for your attention. In the moments to come, I will gladly attend to your questions.